Hello, and welcome back to the Camera Rolling Podcast. I'm your host, Ronnie, and this is episode 22. So this episode might be a little bit shorter than my other ones just because it's a review and I'm going to be sort of talking about the movie in full that we're talking about today. And I I feel like there's so much yet so little to this movie. I, I don't know how to explain my thoughts about it quite yet, but it had been on my list for a long time. And there was one particular thing that made me want to watch this movie other than the title, which is The Midnight Meat Train. So if you don't already know, I have a letterbox account and that is sort of where I like to make the different lists for sort of like overarching topics that I sometimes talk about or like analyze within like a few different movies. So I I frequent letterbox, right? And I was looking through some of the movies and I stumbled across The Midnight Meat Train. And of course, I was like, what could this possibly be about? Like, what a strange name for a film. Like, a meat train? Like, this has to be a joke, right? I look at the reviews first because I saw that it had, like, I think two, two point, yeah, it has 2.7 stars between all of the reviews. Needless to say, when I looked at the reviews, I was immediately like, I have to see this film because this is so funny. The top three reviews that appear when you look at this movie on Letterboxd are these. The first one says, this Friday, your meat beats back, which again, hilarious. I love people who can review like that. The second one says, the train doesn't even come at midnight. And I will explain why that is accurate about this film. And the third one is a little bit longer. It's like actually a review where they sort of talk about how it's a little weird that Bradley Cooper stars in this film because it's a very like different style to I think sort of the films he was normally in at the time. The film came out in 2008. So I think this was probably around the time that we were seeing Bradley Cooper in some more like serious types of films and this film in particular is like a horror film um, but it has some sort of it has some like mystery action elements to it that makes it sort of unique and strange. But the film The Midnight Meat Train is directed by Ruhei Kitamura And of course, I said earlier that it stars Bradley Cooper. It also has Vinnie Jones and Leslie Bibb. And there's also like some more stars in it that are just like, it's, it's weird to see this many people in this kind of movie, I guess. But there's also Brooke Shields, Roger Bart, and Peter Jacobson. But if you're like me and you're like, okay, this is a weird sounding film. It has a bunch of like famous people in it. Um... What is it about? (laughs) So the film is about Bradley Cooper's character and he's a photographer and he sort of like ends up witnessing some different things that lead him to believe that a man that he saw on the train is like kidnapping and killing people. And so he sort of begins to like investigate a little bit about this man and like follow him around trying to like solve you know this mystery that he thinks is happening so the film opens on like this gritty bluish green sort of vibe of a man on a train and it's nighttime. He's the only one on the train. Now, from this first opening scene, I immediately was like, this is of its time, is it not? I mean, 2008. All of the color grading from this time is like, it's it's twilight or or saw, you know? Like, it's it's got that very, like, heavy filter to it. And I love it. It gives it, you know, it it gives it something. But the man on this train, he gets up and he slips and he falls. And he realizes that what he's fallen in is a bunch of blood, which I don't know how he wouldn't notice this. He's, He's 
gets to stand up and he starts looking around and he goes to sort of the back of the car to look into the car behind and he sees that that car is also filled with a bunch of blood like there's blood everywhere and there's a man in there and he's clearly killing some other person but we don't get to find out what all this is about okay because then we cut to our main characters we get this look at sort of like the city and in comes Bradley Cooper and he immediately takes a photo and it sort of shifts over to him coming home to his girlfriend and it seems that he's a photographer. He has a picture of his girlfriend that he took on the wall and some other like sort of black and white photos so it's pretty clear that he's a photographer. And when Bradley Cooper came into the first frame it immediately reminded me of Limitless. Like I was like, this is weirdly similar. Like, it kind of has that weird vibe. Like, why are we so close to him? Then we see him meeting Roger Bart's character at an art gallery, and he's, you know, got his portfolio, and they're sort of talking. So this woman, Susan, is played by Brooke Shields, and Bradley Cooper shows her the portfolio, and she's like, yeah, like, I like these, but they're not, like, wowing me or anything. Like, they they're good but they don't quite spark any reaction out of me and I just need a little bit more so that evening Bradley Cooper has kind of a weird dream where he like dreams about the train specifically and the train having blood in it and that seems really strange because like why would he immediately have that dream like he's not even there's nothing in his character that has even related thus far to the trains like we as the audience know there's something about the trains but he doesn't so it seems really weird at first but he wakes up from this dream and he sees that it's 1 a.m and so he decides to go out into the street because again weird things happen at night and that's when you can get the best photos of weird stuff so he goes out and he's he sees this like group of young men and he decides to follow them. However, as he's following the young men, they come across a woman and they are intent on assaulting her. And Bradley Cooper's character, Leon, um, he decides to take pictures for a while until the girl sees him and he takes a few more shots and then he makes himself known and he's like, hey, stop it like don't do that and this guy who has a knife comes up to him and of course like Leon just keeps taking pictures like he's like oh man this is an amazing shot like thank you um but also you're being recorded because there's a camera in this station so and the guy sort of looks at the camera and looks back at Leon and then he tells you know his crew he's like let's get out of here like But when the guys are gone, Leon goes to talk to the woman and he's like, hey, are you okay? And she's like, thank you. Most people would have just walked away. But then she goes down the stairs to get on the train and he takes a few more shots of her getting on the train and she does. But when Leon leaves, we sort of transition to see the girl on the train and we find out that her being alone, she ends up getting killed by this like unidentified man. This is also the first scene where we get sort of like a a particular like CGI effect that is supposed to look graphic and again it feels very Saw-esque like besides the color grading for the train scenes to be like extremely blue and like heavily contrasted you also have these like kind of crazy looking blood effects uh, from the unidentified man hitting people uh, because you see that he like hits them with something and it looks like sort of a mallet type of hammer type thing and so I just immediately like clocked that because I was like whoa that looks really cheap now I'm sure at the time it didn't look as cheap but like I didn't really expect like it to be a a a computer generated effect i because because earlier in the very first scene he's falling around in blood and stuff and you see the blood on everything else so i sort of expected there to be practical effects in this film and like when it comes to some of the more graphic violence that happens later 
uh, they don't use practical effects, and I just thought that that was kind of sad because there were really good practical effects in other parts, but then, like, yeah, when it came to other things, I was like, oh... But before we can see much more of what happens to this girl, we go back to Leon and he's already developed the photos from the night before and his girlfriend is like, whoa, like you got these photos, like that's kind of, wow, like these photos are really different. Then we see him going to sort of like either breakfast or lunch, it looks like. Leon is leading, reading the paper in this scene and he sees that or he recognizes the girl from the night before that she is missing and she's this like famous model and she's gone. I literally just saw this girl. I need to give my pictures that I took of her over to the police because maybe it was those guys. So that's what he does. He goes to the police and he's like, hey, this girl that's missing, I took pictures of her last night and it might be these guys. And the detective that is that he's talking to is like, okay, like, yeah, but why were you taking her picture? Like, she also sort of implies, like, how do I know that you didn't do anything to this girl? Like, she is famous and you're a photographer. Like, are, were you, like, trying to take her picture and da da da? And he's like, no, I didn't do anything. Like, I'm just trying to help out, right? After he visits the detective, he goes to show Brooke Shields' character, his new photos, and she's like, this is great. This is amazing. I've never, you know, like, I I want more of this. So if you can get me some more photos like this that give me the same wow factor, then you'll be in a show in a couple of weeks. So, but Leon decides that he's going to go back into the night so that he can try to get more photos right away. But we cut to another train scene. We see more people on the train and this woman who is on the train like with these other two men they're talking and she's like wait a minute didn't we pass our stop and this is sort of when we get the first indication that like something is different about this train and my thought was like this is a runaway train like these are these are like supernatural entities you know that like something's going on here but we see this this figure, this man again, but this time we actually get to see his face when he goes after these people with, again, this like meat mallet thing. It's like his Thor's hammer type of deal. And of course, this character is Vinnie Jones. And then as he's getting off the train, Leon spots him coming up the escalator and he decides to take pictures of him and to follow this man. The man looks kind of like, you know, he's a man with a big bag and when I saw this bag, I'm not going to lie, I immediately thought of the grandma off of Halloween Town with her bag that has, like, all the things in it. Because it, that's what he does. He pulls, like, the, the hammer mallet thing out of his bag. And I'm like, but does he have a witch's broom? But Leon decides to follow the man, but the man clocks that he is following him. So when he turns a corner, he stops. But he gets, like, clothesline by him. Well, just about clothesline. And he's like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry. Like, I didn't, I just wanted to take your picture. Like, sorry about this. But Leon notices, like, the ring that he has on his finger because it's very big and it has, like, a weird sort of, like, symbol type of thing on it. But the man doesn't say anything. He just sort of stares at Leon and then just walks away. But Leon is sort of shaken by this encounter, so he you know, doesn't follow him anymore. And then we start to see him develop the photos. And as he's developing them, he recognizes the ring from that man's finger in another picture, the picture from the night before with the woman that went missing. And he sees the ring holding the door open for the woman to get on the train. And so immediately... He is like, this guy has something to do with her disappearance. And this is when Leon decides to follow this man. So we sort of get a look into this guy's like daily life. He gets dressed and gets ready and then he heads off to work and Leon is following him and he finds that the man works at sort of like a meatpacking facility. So he's like, you know, chopping up animals and stuff for their meat. But Leon follows him after he gets off of work and he notices that the man sits around until the very late hours of the evening. However, Leon, in trying to follow him, ends up getting like stopped by a an officer who's like, I need to inspect this. 
But yet again, we get another scene of this man on the train and he ends up having to attack the man that is also on the train. But he goes after a man that's wearing like some military type of attire. So it's kind of implied that he would know how to fight back. And so it's a little bit more difficult for him to like hurt this man. So there ends up being more of a tussle. And then we see the conductor go from his his spot in the front, taking a gun and going back there. And he ends up shooting the man. And he looks over at the other man that we don't know who's, you know, killing people. And he says, I'm a little disappointed in you, Mahogany. And of course, this is when we find out Vinnie Jones's character's name is Mahogany. But we also find out that the conductor is part of this whole killing people train thing. But again, we move back to Leon and what's going on with him. And his girlfriend is looking at the photos that he's taken and... She's like, oh, this is like kind of, you know, kind of creepy that you're just following this specific dude. Or And Leon's like, oh, they're not for Susan. Like, th- this isn't for the show. This is, I, I want to follow him because I think he killed this girl. Like, and his girlfriend is like, no, just like give yourself over to the police and they'll figure it out. It'll be fine. But Leon can't get it out of his brain. So he does some research And he starts looking through old papers about missing persons. And this is one of those things where, like, I don't know if there's enough buildup for us to believe that he should be going on this, like, uh, I guess, like, fishing expedition to figure out, like, what this guy has to do with the disappearance. Because if it were me, I would only be able to equate him to that one disappearance. But... Something, I guess, in Leon is telling him that this guy is connected to more things. So Leon follows him yet again to his work. Mahogany clocks him and tries to come after him. So we get sort of this like little, you know, this little chase scene through the meat packing plant. And, you know, he's trying to hide amongst all of like the meat carcasses. And he just narrowly escapes And when his girlfriend comes home later to the apartment, she sees there are photos everywhere of mahogany and just all this different stuff. And Leon is sort of trying to explain to her this is like his crazy, you know, Charlie from It's Always Sunny, like... And obviously his girlfriend is worried because like he all of a sudden has become very obsessed with this man and these this murder he murder plot that he thinks is happening. And she's like, you need to calm down, like just get back to taking photos of what you want to take photos of. Like you need to like get back to working on your portfolio, you know, take pictures of things you love. And this sort of breaks Leon for a second and he sort of begrudgingly takes her photos but after this Leon shows up at her work and he's like hey I'm sorry she's like you know she accepts his apology and when she moves away from him he sees in the mirror behind him that Mahogany is following him that he's outside the window so Leon's back in it like so Leon follows him again to the train and this time he's able to get on the train In this scene, we see Mahogany on the train. Everyone gets off the train. It's the last train. And there's a couple of men who are also on the same car as him. And so he decides to go after them. Meanwhile, Leon is hiding in the next train over. And as Mahogany is killing these guys, Leon sort of peeks over where he's hiding from and he sees that Mahogany is straight up killing these dudes. Like, no doubt about it. Eventually, Mahogany sees him there and, of course, chases after him. So, Leon is running through each of the cars trying to get to the front and this is one of those scenes where I'm just like, awesome. I I love a good chase. I wish we got to see more of the chase from Mahogany, like, from his side of, like, how fast he is, but... Uh, needless to say, Leon gets to the front car and he's trying to like talk to the conductor and he's like, hey, I need help. But Mahogany gets a hold of him and knocks him out. And when Leon wakes up, Leon is hanging upside down and he sort of gets like attacked again, I guess, by 
mahogany, like something is happening to him and we it kind of like flashes in and out, but we're not really sure. But the screen goes black and when Leon wakes up next, he finds that he's actually in like a sort of sub-basement of the meat packing plant. So he wakes up and he like makes his way out of the place, obviously confused because like Mahogany killed these other people but not him for some reason. But he gets home and of course like his girlfriend is worried, she's upset, she's like what's going on and immediately he goes to the bathroom to sort of investigate like what is going on, right? But he also ends up looking at his chest to find that there was a symbol carved into his chest the same symbol that was on mahogany's ring obviously this is concerning and this is the point at which i was like maybe this is like a cult or something you know like maybe it's this weird butcher cult like his girlfriend is scared she's like what the heck is going on here like what happened to you like we need to call the police and leon is like i found out some stuff tonight he, like, I saw, I saw this man kill people, and I took pictures, but he took my camera. As his girlfriend is looking, her name is Maya, sorry, I keep calling her that, but Maya, she decides to get Jurgis, and she's like, I saw in one of the photos that this man lives at or goes to Hotel Barclay, so let's go there and investigate. So Maya and Jurgis go into the hotel and they find the room that Mahogany is staying in. And when he leaves, they break in to look around for Leon's camera because obviously they need proof if they're going to, you know, try to get this guy for killing people, right? So they go in there, they're looking around. While Jurgis is looking in one of the rooms, he finds the camera, but... Mahogany comes back because they don't keep a lookout for some reason, and he ends up hitting Jurgis over the head. However, on the other side of the apartment, Maya is looking around, and she sees, like, the weird jars of stuff that he has, like, in his medicine cabinet, but she also finds this, like, notebook that's full of a bunch of, like, train time cards and stuff, and she finds that there's all these, like, hours circled like the last one is like 2 a.m or 3 a.m or something like that but when she finds out that mahogany is in the apartment she runs out and she immediately goes to the police to the detective because she's got to say like hey there's this man at hotel barkley she's trying to tell all the information but the detective is not having it the detective is like yeah okay um we could get you for breaking and entering like there's there's no crime that is being reported right now except for the one that you committed but then we cut back to leon and he is at sort of the gallery opening with susan and she's telling him how to like you know talk to all these different people who might want to buy but he's clearly out of it he's clearly not with it. And when he sees the picture of the butcher, Mahogany, again, it sort of sparks something in him. So he decides to leave suddenly. And this is when we can really see that something is the matter because he is leaving, like, the closest he's ever been to his dreams to go after this guy. But we cut back to Maya and she is And she goes to her work because she knows that there is a gun there and she grabs the gun. But as she's leaving, trying to call Leon to tell him what's going on, the detective appears behind her being like, you know, give give the book back. Like, we know that you have the book of stuff. Give it back. And Maya's like, no. And this is another moment where I was like, wait, what does the detective know? Because Maya asks, and she says, where's Jurgis? I know, I think you know where he's at. And the detective answers, and she's like, he's on the train. So we sort of cut back in between Maya getting on the train to go find her friend Jurgis, and then we also see Leon sort of preparing himself um, in this weird, like, trying to get like a butcher sort of arsenal i don't know why he thinks he needs so many weapons so maya rides the train in hopes that she'll encounter mahogany or you know find jurgis and leon is sort of waiting in this little underground type of place that he had found before and he ends up seeing that maya is on the train 
And so, obviously, he has to get her off the train because he cares about her and he loves her. And so, he sort of, like, jumps on slash after the train and, you know, is trying to, like, get into the train. It's one of those things where it's, like, there's just no way that you'd be able to do that. But I guess we'll, like, suspend our disbelief because a lot of this movie suspends our disbelief. But Maya finds the train car where Jurgis is and she, he's, like, hey, like, you found me or something like that and he's you know hanging upside down on this hook and for some reason again he's like still alive i don't really know what this dude's like position is like if he's supposed to kill them every time or if he just is like supposed to incapacitate them long enough for him to hang them up but mahogany comes into the train car and he's about to kill maya when leon shows up and he's like you know hey come get me if you want to get me and this is one of those, like, it starts, it turns into, like, an action movie, I swear to God, because, like, they're really, like, fighting, throwing each other around, like, there's these hanging bodies on either side, like, it really is, like, a little horror action scene. It's very strange, very weird, like, I feel bad for all the hanging bodies that are just, like, me, like, waving around and stuff, especially because, like, the friend Jurgis is still alive, so he's there, also, they're, like, naked, so, like, there's a bunch of butts in these scenes. It's just, it's a very strange scene, because it's action-y and gory and kind of funny. It's, but the scene sort of goes on for a while until Leon opens the, like, train car doors, and he hits Mahogany out of them like he pushes him out and so mahogany is now gone maya and leon sort of think that it's like over now they like embrace each other they're like oh my gosh like we're fine but also we're on this train but the train makes its final stop and the conductor comes out and says you're gonna want to get off this train like like they get off and we see these weird monster human-like sort of things come out and start eating the hanging people. And this was the point at which I was like, this has to be based on a book or a, a story or something because there is no way that someone just came up with this for a movie. Like, Vinnie Jones' character Mahogany shows up again, and he starts fighting him. And Maya, for all of the fight scenes, is just kind of in the background, like, oh no, don't fight, boys. Like, ah. It's, I, I hate when that happens. It really bothers me, because it's like, why, why do that? Like, why is she even here if she is, like, can't contribute in any way? Like, why is she not contributing in any way? Like, she could she could throw stuff. But this scene is sort of the final fight scene between Mahogany and Leon. This is when Leon, like, truly sort of comes into the point at which he has to kill Mahogany. Like, he, he has to, like, put him out of his misery. But before Leon, like, actually kills him, like, in the final blow... The first and only word that Mahogany says in the movie is welcome. And he puts his head down and Leon drives the knife like through his head. And this is when it gets even weirder because the conductor takes Leon. He he holds him in his, his hand and he pulls out his tongue. This is weird. Not only does he do that, but the conductor eats the tongue. It's gross. Leon you know, sort of, he falls to the ground because obviously this is traumatizing. And he sees that his girlfriend is sort of laying on top of this, like, pile of, like, bodies or bones. And as he's sort of there, like, on the ground, the conductor sort of explains that, like, there are these weird humanoid-type things that we have to feed because they've been here forever, longer than we have, and, um somebody's got to do it. Somebody's got to make sure that nobody knows that we have to feed these guys. People, you know? The conductor then goes over to Maya and he kills her. And he quite literally rips out her still beating heart. Then he sort of hands it to Leon and is like, all right, like, are you ready for your job? And we cut to Leon getting ready for his day in sort of the same way that Mahogany did. 
We also see that the detective was in fact in on the whole thing and that she sort of helps out with this stuff. Then we get a final shot of him walking on the train with the bag and he like abruptly sort of like turns his head around again as if to like break the fourth wall. The point at which I had to look up this movie and see what was going on was the point at which I was talking before about how when I saw like the weird humanoid things, I was like, what's going on? There's definitely more lore behind this. And I was right. When I looked it up, this film is based on a Clive Barker story of the same name. The film is slightly different than the actual story, and the only part of the story that I've really gotten to read is uh, the Wikipedia summary of it. I wish that I, I wish that I actually had the story. It's from Clive Barker's Books of Blood. The movie follows the story, sort of, but there's a lot more in the story that gives, like, greater detail into what's happening. So, in the same vein, it's about a man named Leon who ends up finding out that there is a man named Mahogany who is killing people on the train. However, the way that he finds out is a little bit different... But in the movie, there's, like, a lot more of, like, mystery, trying to, like, figure out, like, the specific person and people who go missing, whereas it seems like in the story, he just ends up waking up to find this out and then having to kill Mahogany in self-defense. And when the train gets to, like, the last station is, like, sort of when he, like, finds all of this stuff out and he ends up taking over Mahogany's role because of this, like, because he killed him. And it seems like in the story, there's, again, a lot more that happens after he finds out this, like, information of, like, oh, there's these weird humanoid thingies, and, like, you have to become a butcher for us, and I'm gonna, like, rip out your tongue. But, like, there's more that happens after that in the story where, like, he sees the cleanup crew that actually, like, covers up what happened in the car. I don't know if there's, like, sort of the, like, almost supernatural culty element to it in the story or not because I was definitely getting those vibes from the movie where, like, it did feel very, like, there is sort of a supernatural uh, society type of vibe to the end of it. Either way, this film was really interesting. It was a really interesting watch because of just like the combination of the effects and uh, the editing from the time period of like being 2008, like having that Final Destination, Saw, Twilight sort of, you know, vibe in there, while also having someone like Bradley Cooper and like Leslie Bibb being these like serious mystery action sort of thing happening while there's also like this horror element that's involved with it because I mean Bradley Cooper and Limitless there's clearly like an action-y type of vibe to that film like there's an action-y sort of thing but there's also like the grittiness of like the city and his depression at the beginning of the film so like I can see how this film might feel similar to that film and how it would make sense in his filmography, but the horror element makes it really weird and really strange to me. But I think the story is where it falls short because it's based on a story and it doesn't have the time to really tell that story or like do that story justice it seems like. I think that like the movie is really interesting but it left me wanting more because I felt like something was missing and it's because the ending sort of had to be rushed to include the reason why this guy was killing people and like why these people are disappearing because in my head I thought this easily could have just been about a butcher who was trying to get away with murder and, you know, going on this spree and then, like, the the police would come and save the day or something like that, you know? Like, something stupid and, and wishful thinking, right? But to have this sort of, like, supernatural horror element um, or, like, fantastical, I don't know what you would call it, like, fantasy type of thing, to have that be, like, a main element 
of the film and to only be able to hint at it before the reveal uh, makes it hard to sort of grasp by the time that you get to the end, especially when you're throwing at us like the lore that the conductor sort of tries to like impart on the audience very quickly and through dialogue. I thought this was going to be shorter, but clearly I talked for much longer than I thought I would because this movie just has so much going on with it. And it's just really, it's a really weird and interesting movie. So if you get the chance to watch it, I would highly recommend watching it. But that is all that I have for this film. And just a quick reminder that if you follow on Spotify, you will get to hear the episodes earlier than you do on YouTube. So on Spotify, they are released at 1.30 p.m. CST or Central Standard Time. And on YouTube, they are released at 4 p.m. So if you want to hear the episodes early. I would highly suggest following on Spotify, but you can also subscribe on YouTube at Ronnie Page Films. But with that, keep watching movies and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!